Caroline Dowd Higgins. Thank you for listening to Your Working Life, my podcast series featuring thought leaders in the career and personal growth arena. I know that you spend a significant portion of your life at work, so I'm on a mission to provide you with tools, inspiration, and resources so you can enjoy your career and love your life. And I'm so delighted to have my very special guest today, Lori Ann LaRocco. Lori, thank you, Lori Ann, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Well, I want to tell my audience a little bit about you. You have an amazing background. As a senior talent producer on CNBC, Lorianne LaRocco has the ear of some of the world's biggest business minds. She's been working at the network since 2000, and Lorianne was first hired as one of Maria Batromo. Say this name for me, Maria Batromo's. It's it's Bartiromo. Bartiromo. My goodness, I speak Italian. I should know this. Maria Bartiromo's <laughs> producers on her first primetime show, Market Week. And Lorianne produced and booked interviews with some of the biggest unattainable names in the business. And your track record has garnered the trust and respect from Wall Street rainmakers to Washington, establishing relationships with some of the best in the business. And you've got an amazing book out called Opportunity Knock which we are going to talk about today, Lorianne. I'm so delighted that you're on the show, and I'm eager to pick your brain. First, I'd love to hear how you got started in broadcasting. Well, I started out uh, in college, uh, went to uh, SUNY Plattsburgh up in uh, upstate New York. Yes. And uh, I had a double major in mass media communications and broadcast journalism. Uh, I always knew that I wanted to be a journalist. Uh, Back when I was in seventh grade, I was actually editor-in-chief of my junior high newspaper. Bravo. (laughs) And uh, and then, you know, that that just parlayed into being, you know, editor-in-chief of the high school paper and so on and so on. How great. So you knew as a, as a kid that you wanted to go into this profession. So, exactly. I mean, how, how did you make the, the segue, though, from, from university into the biz? Because you, you're you hitting it big time, and it's, it's not that easy. You know, it just takes a lot of hard work. Uh, when I was the college that I was going to attend, I wanted to make sure that I had hands-on experience because that's really what separates you from the competition. And the longer that you do it, the better you become. So I went to SUNY Plattsburgh because I was able to go on air and touch the equipment, if you will, as a first semester freshman, which is ulti- which is really unheard of in many courses. So um, I interned a lot. I got to know a lot of people, and I just kind of focused on my craft, and I was lucky. I was able to get a job uh, right out of college. Good for you. Well, you know, I think luck has something to do with it, but clearly you have uh, an incredible work ethic and you are willing to put yourself in the line of fire. And I think that's altogether important. But what is your advice for, for those listeners who are interested in careers in broadcasting? You have to really love it because, you know, it takes years in order to make a living wage. Yeah. Uh, when I was anchor and reporter out in Hastings, Nebraska, I made thirteen thousand dollars a year. Yeah. And uh, my husband, who's in radio, he made uh, eleven thousand his first job. Now, you know, it's something that you have to be committed to with a twenty-four-seven job. I mean, even to this day, I'll get phone calls during dinner, and my kids are, you know, like, "Oh goodness, why is the White House calling?" You know, it's six <laughs> o'clock at night. Um, but you know, you just really have to want it and you just have to really be likable because if you are a team player and you're willing to work hard, you will go far. And it's a very small industry. I mean, the, the, my old boss here at CNBC is now one of the big head honchos over at Fox news. So like I said, your reputation is just as important as your ability. Wow, that's so true. Now, you've really interviewed some of the biggest names in the business world. Any particular lessons that you've learned from these interview subjects? I would say one of the biggest lessons that I have learned is the need for manners. I cannot tell you how many times I've had CEOs, uh, you know, be impressed that I walk them to the door Yeah. after an interview. To me, it's just common sense, but they really uh, they really take notice in terms of people being polite, uh, handwriting thank yous, 
um, you know, that personal touch. And they take note of if someone doesn't walk them to the, to the door because it's all about the human aspect of it. I mean, there is a line of confidence and arrogance that, you know, all these individuals do embody uh, because, you know, you need to have a little bit of a little bit of everything in order to be successful. But in the end, they truly value value, manners, and being respectful. And I think that, you know, that's something that we should all have because you and I both know in this world of social media where you text, you know, T-Y instead of, you know, calling somebody up or writing in that says thank you. Little things like that really go a long way. I so agree with you, Lorianne. And, you know, the, the handwriting or the handwritten note, I should say, is a dying art. And I hope that you and I can, can double-handedly keep it alive. You know, I think it's so important. I really, really do. And it does show that we go the extra mile. And I know when I get a handwritten note, I, I treasure it because they're so rare. I do. Uh, Alan Mulally, um, you know, who's in my, yes. my latest book, he wrote me the nicest handwritten letter. And I actually keep them. I keep all of them from the CEOs that, that write me because, like you said, it, it is a lost art. But I think it's the fact that someone sits down and handwrite something, you know, shows you at least within those few minutes, at least they were thinking about you. Absolutely. Versus, you know, versus having the secretary type something up. Absolutely. Okay, so let's dive into your latest book, which is called Opportunity Knocking. Tell me about that. And, and I want you to back up a little bit and say where the inspiration for the Opportunity Pyramid came from. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Um, I, I'm fortunate where I know some of the world's top business leaders. And uh, before I was at CNBC, and I've been here for 14 years, 10 years, be 10 years before that, I worked in local news. So I've interviewed everybody from the local deli all the way to, you know, the billionaires like Wilbur Ross, Richard LaFrac. Yeah. And it, it dawned on me, I was actually sitting on the floor in an airport down in Miami because there was a huge layover. Um, everything was delayed. And I was going over all these questions that people were asking me at this conference that I was keynoting at. And it dawned on me that all the strategies that these leaders use, doesn't matter if, like I said, you run the deli or, you know, you run a corporate company, um, they all are identical. And I'm very visual. So I like to create things that I can see. And I think a lot of times people, if you see it and you hear it, and you read it, it kind of all clicks together. Yeah. So I created what's called the Opportunity Pyramid, and there are seven steps that all hinge upon the other for you to achieve the apex, and that apex is what I call world domination, and that means <laughs> being the best that you can be. <laughs> I love it. I love it. World domination. Good stuff. So unpack a couple exactly. of them for me, Lorianne, and, sure. and then I want to segue into how your juicy book, Opportunity Knocking, can help each and every one of our, our listeners. Sure. I mean, the first, a lot of it is just when you pull yourself back, you go, gosh, why didn't I think of that? Um, it doesn't matter if you're a small businessman, a manager, entrepreneur, or aspiring entrepreneur. Okay. Okay. All these strategies you can use, it's just uh, tailored to where you want to be, okay, in, in, the, in the work food chain. The first thing is you need to know who you are. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? If you don't know that, how can you assess an opportunity? How can you build on that? Um, it's something very basic. If you, you know, you want to work on your strengths, you, you want to focus on your strengths rather and work on your weaknesses because that way you can uh, go down the path that you think will be strongest for you because we all have talents and we all you know, we're all different in certain ways. You have to capitalize on what makes you different and what makes you better. Listen, this is music to my ears because that self-reflection is one of the most important parts of the career development process. So I love that that's the foundation of the opportunity that, pyramid. Exactly. So then after that, you go into, um, you go into fortifying your education, right? Okay. You want to, you want to fortify your knowledge based on your strengths and weaknesses. For example, um, Harold Tam, he is America's richest oil man with a high school education. Yeah. And he could not afford to go to college. He, he, he was one of 13 children. His parents were sharecroppers. And 
uh, he went to school only during the winter because when you're a sharecropper or a farmer, you have to be out there to, you know, to right. create to the heart. You gotta, you gotta work. Exactly. So he, um, met somebody in the oil industry and it really left an impression on him. He was like, you know, gee whiz, this is something that I want to do, but he didn't know what to do. So what did he do? He spoke to people. He became, you know, he kind of interned, if you will. He picked the brain of anybody in the industry, and then he was able to start a small business by distributing oil. He started Baby Steps, and this is something that you could do, I can do, anybody can do this. And then when he was able to afford some sort of education, he collectively chose college courses in geology, which of course now has helped Con Continental right. being the leading fracking company. So it's stuff like that. That's an, that's a crucial piece, which hinges back, of course, to your foundation, working on your strengths and your weaknesses. You know, then you, then you lead up to where you're talking about um, passion, because passion gets you through the highs and lows in life. We all know life is hard, and sometimes you'll hit a bump in the road. So, you know, so I talked to Steve Case, because he has reached a pinnacle of success and has fallen down. In yes. very public manner. Yeah. So, you know, I thought he'd be a really good person to talk to because a lot of people know about, of course, you know, the demise of AOL after the Time Warner merger. But he left. A lot of people don't realize this, but he worked at a Fortune 500 company, a uh, very safe company, you know, right out of college. And he knew he wanted to do more. So he had this opportunity to go to uh, Control Video, which created GameLine. It was this... Uh, a, an online system. And he got there first meeting. He re the comp going under. How would you feel? You're sitting in that company and you're like, oh, gee whiz, I just left this, this uh, safe company. And now I'm facing possible unemployment. So he and his colleagues created uh, uh, the next company, which became America Online. And he talks about how you really need to surround yourself with people that share the same passion, the same mantra, the same work ethic, because you need that. It's not, there's no I in team. Yes. So, you know, again, this is something that everyone can relate to. And it doesn't matter if you're a manager or you work for somebody or you want to, or you want to go out on your own, you have to have a team. So, you know, that is another layer of the pyramid that, that hinges upon everything else. That, uh, you want to yeah wanna, yeah we just or? we just had a little delay in our our sound but i think we're back we're in good shape you know what i found really fascinating too lorianne okay. about the pyramid was the ability to take a risk and to learn how to fail forward right we're all going to fail we're all going to stumble and that's okay that's part of the journey we shouldn't let that paralyze us we should use it as momentum take the next step right Exactly. Fear can really immobilize you. And none of these uh, leaders are afraid to fail because, as you said, you have to fail forward. You have to learn. And and you have to look at failure almost as a gift because right. sometimes, you know, you can fail, but you will learn from something. Everything is a learning process in order for you to attain your goal. So true. So true. I couldn't agree more. Okay, so let's let's talk about you. You've got three kids. I know you have this incredibly busy schedule. I imagine your kids are active as well. How do you do it? Right? I mean, everybody talks about work life balance, which I don't I don't believe in that term. I think it's more <laughs> work life integration. But what's your secret secret sauce? How do you do it? I call it survival. <laughs> <laughs> Forget balance, survival. I like it. It's all about survival. Um, you know, I, I'm always about living life, you know, to the fullest. And, you know, when you look back at life, you want to see what kind of mark you're going to be. And, you know, I've, very, I've got three very active kids. My, my for oldest son, who's 12, plays three hockey teams. He, he's on travel hockey. Um, my other son plays baseball. My daughter is a competitive equestrian. So we're always out, you know, doing horse shows. And I just want to be a role model for my kids where enjoy what you do. And I, and I love my job. And, you know, I just figure it to me, it's not work. I, I just like doing it. So I think it's like your mindset. And, you know, like I said, this survival, you got, you know, food's got to get on the table. <laughs> you got to get your kids out. To, it's all advertising. And, 
and just kind of not getting too caught up in that moment because it, it is pretty daunting what we do on a daily basis as a, as a working mom, but it can be done. Good for you. And it sounds like you're enjoying the process, which is so important. I definitely am. Like, like I said, you know, you only live life once and you go because why not? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what's one of the most important messages that you want to share with our listening audience from Opportunity Knocking? Why should they go out and read your book? I think people should pick because a lot of times we're too hard on ourselves. And you always hear the negative. I wish I could, but I can't. Oh, I can't. you know, there we deserve to and tap into to tap into our potential, and we deserve to have those moments for ourselves. And I think when you pick up the book, we're all good at something. Right. We just have to recognize it, and you need to really have that reflection in, you have to have an inflection inside yourself and go you know what I am good at x y and z you know what I crochet on the side and people say I'm a good painter why don't you try to make something of it it doesn't hurt to try don't live coulda woulda shoulda just go for it because you never know what can excellent I like it you've got to just go for it beautifully put Lorianne how do we how do we buy your book and how do we follow you online well, I, uh, you can buy the book uh, in bookstores as well as Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. And uh, I do have a blog where I do write several times a week in terms of, you know, just some insights into tapping into your inner leader. And that's at LorianneLarocco.wordpress.com. And then uh, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at Lorianne Larocco. Excellent. Lorianne, what a joy to have you on. I wish you great success with the new book, Opportunity Knocking. You are an inspiration, and it's delightful to have you on the show. I wish you great success, and I hope that we get to cross paths again soon. Thank you so much for having me, and it was wonderful. Well, you take good care. You too. And I want to thank everyone for tuning into your working life, where my goal is to help you design your career destiny so it doesn't happen by default. True career and life satisfaction is really possible, and it's time to embrace what you love doing so you can do more of it. I'm Caroline Dowd-Higgins. Take good care.